Welcome to uh, TED Summit uh, Innovators. We have the winners from uh, TEDAC Open. Uh, that is Mood Sense, uh, well, one of. Um, so please, and we also have Brian on the line from uh, Signal Wire as well, uh, and uh, Johnny as always. So really, uh, for the Mood Sense team, please. <laughs> Introduce yourselves, maybe a little bit of background, and uh, then we'll move on into understanding the problem your hack was solving. Okay. You want to start? Go for it. Go for it. All right. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So uh, I'm Rob. Uh, Rob Farham. Um, I've been um, I've been writing code and you know programming um, since my since my teens. I've been doing it professionally for. Oh, since 07 or something. Yeah. Um, uh, but um, Pam and I started doing hackathons. I'd never done one before this year, but we, we oh. this is our second one that we had done. And uh, the, the first one, we we, uh, we got together with a team of people that, uh, you know, were kind of new and um, we tried to build out an app in, mm -hmm. in two days and uh, it was, a, it was kind of a disaster. We couldn't get everything together, but uh, yeah. Um, so we decided this time we we're going to try to do something simple and yep. uh, the tools that uh, SignalWire provided actually made that really easy for us to, you know, take something, you know, uh, that, you know, like, like, like you were saying earlier that we had never seen or touched before and, and, uh, you know, turn it into a, a product or, you know, something yeah. that was usable. Uh, anyway. Exactly, exactly. And meaningful. <laughs> I think that for me was what impressed me most with Mood Sense. This was something I could identify with in terms of the problem and how your solution would help. So that's what impressed me most. Right. So it was actually uh, Pam's awesome idea that, that she'd come up with and why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Pamela Misha. Um, I don't have as much of an extensive background in uh, working with computers as he does, but um, my background is actually in uh, medical science. Um, my bachelor's is in biomedical science, but oh, I decided cool. after working in the uh, medical laboratory for a bit that I was interested in the you know behind the scenes kind of um, you know, problem solving and and mm -hmm. making. You know, creation. So uh, yep. I turned to studying, um, you know, computer science, data science specifically. Oh, right. I'm gotcha. currently, I have uh, three classes left of my master's and um, looking forward to, you know, applying myself. And so I wanted to begin, you know, getting my feet wet with doing hackathons. Uh, like yep. I mentioned, I did one um, in January. And uh, that was it was a pretty cool experience seeing that for the first time, like uh, in real life, you know, the web applications. Um, and uh, this time is much more successful in the <laughs> feel of how, you know, the flow of things. Exactly. So, um, <clears throat> so when it comes to our project, it made sense. Um, we were kind of brainstorming about how to create something that would be you know, we could use daily uh, that, you know, it's a problem we have daily that we could create something to, uh, you know, address that issue. Um, so uh, we kind of thought about, you know, like uh, journaling, you know, because we, yep. we all have like, all these uh, thoughts that we kind of want to vent in some way. Mm -hmm. And so we thought about using um, AI to kind of facilitate <laughs> um, this venting and, and documentation. Yep. And, and give you some feedback yes. and bounce ideas off of, you know. Yes, so yeah, um, kind of where we got started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's very powerful. I mean, you know, a, a lot of therapists recommend journaling just as a way of processing thoughts, issues, you know, just you know, problems that people feel in their life in terms of getting it written down, and then being able to use something that maybe perceived as, you know, as anonymous, as an AI agent, can actually be very powerful in that the tools now can interact in a very human way, but it's still, it's not another person you're having to share these personal thoughts with. It's just a tool that's been had all that training and can give you advice and take step by step through in helping people with depression or, you know, other issues that they feel in their life. That's why I thought it was just such a simple but powerful example of how the signal wire, a signal wire AI gateway could be used. So what, as you, you know, 
moved from ideation to implementation. What were some of the sort of you know, highs and lows in moving from idea to actually having a working demo? Hmm. Well, there weren't really a lot of lows, were there? I mean, um, <laughs> they, they, they really kind of made the, the process really easy for us. I mean, cool. I, I had I was one one time when I had a question and I yep. you know all I had to do was take a step outside and ask Brian and he was yep. right there. Yeah, Other exactly. That, I mean, yeah, everything was great. There were examples on the website of how to use their product. And um, do you recall there being any lows? No, not all. It was um, pretty smooth actually. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people around us noted how easily it was implemented, like integrated into their projects. These yes. a lot of products. So yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And having Brian there, I mean, of course, it's when you've got you know, the expert there makes life so much easier. So maybe, Brian, moving over to you then, what were some of the things in your planning to create such a powerful on-ramp for using the SignalWire AI gateway? Well, um, you know, as somebody that has attended multiple TAD hacks in the past, yeah. um, I decided... I needed to approach this from both ends of the spectrum because you have people that learn from example and you have people that learn from documentation. Yeah. And then you just have that one that wants to put the square peg in the round hole instantly. <laughs> so I kind of had to like balance what I was wanting to do there. Yeah. So, you know, at the end of the day, I decided we, we come up with a project a year prior to this TAD hack yeah. internally called Wire Starter. Yes. And it was my endeavor to. If a customer had a problem, we had a controlled environment and a replicatable solution yeah. that we could figure things out with. So it come down to, I wanted to change that into an on-ramp for all of this. So we, gotcha. we, we come up with a way to, to just get that simplistic, get up, get going, out the door, no having to do a lot of muss or fuss. It's ready to go. So we could write how-tos, we could write guides that would get you from nothing to something in li as little as however long it took you to download the, the Docker image. Yeah. Uh, so you, you run wire starter, you yep. run a setup command, you pick a, a demo you want to do, you in, you know, you input your ngrok tunnel and all the things you need, yep. set it all up like it's supposed to be and boom, it'll, it'll do it. And, and it was a great uh, learning experience for me because that's the first time we've deployed Wirestarter in an outward facing component. Gotcha. A Other and than so, internal use cases. Yeah, it was mostly internal use cases for us at that point. Yeah. And so my goal was to make it an external facing project for everybody to use to have an easy way to get started because a lot of people do get discouraged when it's not easy. Yeah. And some of this technology is not easy. Exactly. So, it, so once you get somebody from nothing to working and they see it, you've got them hooked yeah. and now they can ask questions. They can get involved. They're engaged. They see yeah. how, how the possibilities could be. And that was my ultimate goal because I, I actually have to look at things as head of developer experience and, and, and the director of support yeah. engineering here at SignalWire, I have to look at things from multiple angles. So putting myself in those positions is very helpful. And, and I kind of exploit when I hire new people I, I'm, I like make them approach things with no knowledge. And I'm like, I need your feedback. Yeah. Let me know kind of what your thoughts are. Let's see what we can do. So as I bring people on or I interact with community members, mm -hmm. I do that. And I'm yeah. just like, not everybody learns the same and not everybody yeah. gets, picks it up as fast. So yes. I kind of have to balance those things uh, from simplistic to complex. And, and I thought that with what we did for this year's Tad Hack, hit that mark. Yeah. based on the feedback that we got from multiple attendees. And, and I really appreciate that because it, it makes me and my DevX team very happy about what we did. And we're going to continue to do those types of things. And we're going to just refine the feedback we received already. We've yeah. already resolved all of that feedback. Those images are pushed. Excellent. Now we're going to go from there and continue to build upon that to make it easier yeah. to get this technology in everybody's hands. Exactly. Because I think for me, controlled environment. That for me, that's the starting point. Making it so that you know, because people don't read documentation, people you know make mistakes because it's all new, you know, and there's always some little gotcha. So if you can just push the environment out of the way, so you're then looking at you know, did they read the doc documentation? How are they doing these particular sort of uh, message passing? But also having an existing example, so you've got something already working. 
you know, and it's sort of in the direction you want to move in. So it then makes it so much easier to then add a bit, add a bit, add a bit, because you're starting from something working rather than, well, this is the entirety of what we want to do and we've got nothing working. You know, it's sort of, again, get something and then just increment, increment, increment. And you end up with something like Mood Sense, which was an amazing demo. Right. And that's, that's, that was my goal from the beginning to make this easier. Like I accidentally got assigned head of developer experience when we were building the AI product, because I was like connecting dots, getting, pushing people to get things out and done yeah. as part of that process with working with Anthony. Yeah. Uh, you know, we worked hand in hand to get these things done. So we were iterating quite quite rapidly, yes. uh, pretty much every morning I would wake up, I would have to relearn things. The landscape would change, you know, everything was in flux so yes. much. So, and it kept me so engaged, but it also was frustrating because you did have to start back and make sure you didn't miss something that changed in the last 24 hours, Yes, but it was a lot of fun to keep up with. And the team almost killed me, but at the end of the day, they see what we're doing and, yeah. and we're, we're, we're moving forward. That's so. it. No, that's really is a, a great description and a powerful tool. Now, Pam, you're wrapping up your master's. Yes. What are you planning next? Well, I'm looking to, um, I'm looking around for internships. I've been applying recently um, you know, since I have three classes left. I'm pretty excited um, about uh, you know, getting <laughs> into the real world and and using the skills I've learned so far. So, cool. uh, and what sort of internships are you looking around data science or yes. dot data general? science, data analytics, um, uh, and data science within any particular disciplines, more on the medical side because of your background, or you're just up for anything? I'm up for anything. It'd be awesome if I could find something that ties in uh, healthcare as uh, with data science, but uh, right now I'm. Um, Pretty excited to you know use my knowledge and skills in uh, any industry. Uh, cool, uh, so. absolutely. So uh, definitely, you know, uh, I'll, I'll be uh, making a point when I write the web blog about this, highlighting that you're open for internships to use all those you know data science skills that you've been building up through your masters. Cool. No, this is great. I, anything anybody else wants to add? Yeah, Please. data scientists. I just want to tell you. So I live in New York here. I'm on Wall Street a lot. And different hedge funds and the highest paid people in there are the data scientists. Everything is done and pulled down from the sky. Yeah. Um, so it's the right field to be in uh, going forward, uh, whether it's healthcare or finance or whatever, yeah. uh, data, data scientists are, are really, uh, you know, special and, yes. and they command big dollars. So congratulations on all the work and, and, uh, Mr. West, really impressive. Finally got a chance to meet you. And I, you know, I'm a big fan of Anthony and Free Switch and I go way back and really amazing to see the passion that you guys put in. And my first year here at Allen and Tad Summit and Tad Hack, and it's just uh, special to be around people like you guys. And uh, this is what it's all about, really creating things. Exactly, uh, that's it. You also highlight something there that I really didn't discuss is, is prompt engineering. Uh, I've had people tell me that that's a BS thing. And I'm like, oh, you've not worked with a language model, <laughs> sir. <laughs> it's absolutely a thing. We, yes. we call we call the, the like one wrong word in your prompt can make the language model misbehave. And we call yeah. that the evil genie, the evil genie. Uh, and one example of that that I have is we had a pizza demo where you could call and order a pizza. And one time out of 100, it would say, we're out of pizza. Even though that was never a thing, so but it's a probability. Yes. So you have to tighten your prompt. It's like the same thing with the the Air Canada and the GM dealership that got the car given away. All of that was was lax prompting. Yes, and, and that is that is something to be aware of. And every time I see these horror stories, I'm like, that can be avoided. It's very simple. You just got to know, you got to understand what you're doing, and and it's it's right up there with the data science thing. You, exactly. it, it is literally my English teacher would be very proud of me right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that is a very good point. And it's as you to the point you made earlier, Brian, it's changing so rapidly. Mm -hmm. I, I put, you know, we interviewed earlier today, um, Nikhil uh, Gupta from uh, Vapi uh, AI. I, <clears> I <throat> asked you know, their info on because I'd seen their demo and it was just like, wow, that's 
it almost feels human. And all he was talking about in all the problems and issues in voice mm. as a uh, interface, I said, well, Brian's told me that. You know, it's like you're both approaching this. We, we have spoke. I've spoke Excellent. to that team. And we had that set, what you're highlighting there, we had that same, like, you know, I told him my thoughts and, and what I've seen. And he thanked me for calling out some of the BS you see in this environment yes. as being real when you know there's no possible way. Humans do not communicate like the binars on Star Trek The Next Generation. That doesn't <laughs> happen. Yes. It's not natural. Correct. That's it. It has to be done with in a human-centric way. And again, mm -hmm. Pam, Pam, Rob, thank you so much for taking the tools that Brian provided and creating what I think is a very special hack with mood sense. So is there anything else anybody wants to add? Otherwise, thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you thank for putting you, on a great uh, event. And, and thanks again, Brian, for uh, you know having a great product. And uh, and thanks for all your help. It's been a, it's well, thank you guys for attending and getting involved. Um, there's, there's a lot of space here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's it's going to get better. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's going to get more powerful. And don't forget, Pam's looking for an internship. Thank you so much and have a great night. Thanks for having us. Bye-bye.